above the clouds, we approach one of the most beautiful spots on the Pacific. The child of old Spain, of the Argonauts 49, and the vigilantes of 56. The child of the mines, the orchards, the mountains, and the sea. A city of romance and glamour. This is San Francisco. Here in these spires of stone and steel, the sturdy sons of men who fought their way across the continent still guide and control the destinies of the great empire which they cleaved from the wilderness. Market Street, the high road of this port of flags, one of the most famous thoroughfares of the world. The Embarcadero, still clinging to its early Spanish name, meaning the embarking place, has always been a haunt of writers. They collected many a stirring tale. Wandering tramp steamers and trans-Pacific liners come from Asia and the Eastern Sea from Latin America and Europe. Here the Orient discharges her treasure. Shimmering silk, ivories, porcelain and tea from China and Japan. Peasant wear from Spain and Italy. It was here in this street of ships that Jack London heard and answered the call of the sea. Seas and ships as they loitered about the docks watching the arrival of boats from far off land. The clocks in the ferry building can be seen for miles around, a constant reminder of ever-changing activity. Through the turnstiles below pours a steady stream of hasty commuters and visitors, intent on work and pleasure. For years, the churning ferry boats have carried a steady procession of people, workers and lovers, honest men and knaves, the living stream of humanity which makes up a great city. The world's two greatest bridges, San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge will be more than eight miles long. Mighty spans of steel rise majestically to the sky, growing like magic to awe-inspiring proportions. Long the world's outstanding challenge to bridge builders, the Golden Gate surrenders at last to the vision and ingenuity of engineers. Winging our way back over this city of startling contrasts, city of adventure, gaiety, enterprise and drama, home of men and women in whom the pioneer spirit still burns, we hover over a civic center indicating pride in political government. The city hall, library, auditorium and state building form an impressive group. The War Memorial Opera House, where the spirit of San Francisco's fallen warriors seems to live again in music. Suavities of outline accent the horizon where skyscrapers take on fantasy against the clouds. Here in the midst of eddying traffic is a unique feature that has defied progress. A cable car and its old-fashioned turntable, just as it was in the early days of the Bonanza King. All the year round, these flower stands of flaming beauty send forth their fragrance, long to remain a distinctive memory to the passerby. On the very fringe of the shopping district is Chinatown, where the largest colony of Chinese outside of China lives its own life. Here, the bazaars, street scenes, and architecture suddenly become truly oriental. Pagoda roofs, joss houses, grilled balconies, the scent of the Orient. Here is young China. In this melting pot of all nations, youth soon learns to become progressive with a smile. One of the busiest places in this oriental section is Chinatown's own telephone exchange. Each operator must memorize the names of over 2,000 subscribers, for numbers are not used here. Just around the corner lies Fisherman's Walk. One realizes the city's cosmopolitan nature upon viewing the picturesque harbor of the Italian fishing fleet with its Madonna blue boats. Entirely of Mediterranean old world are these fishermen. Gentle, kindly, soft of speech, happy as they mend their nets or dispose of the day's catch. Here's where they bring them back alive or cook them while you wait, ready to be taken home or eaten in this quaint bit of Naples overlooking the fishing craft of these gracious people. An ideal yacht harbor facing the Golden Gate. And just as a postman takes a walk on his day off, Shipping magnets go for a sale on Sundays. The beautiful Legion of Honor lies directly below us, a replica of the Legion of Honor in Paris. On the green terrace is the brave young figure of Joan of Arc, sitting so erect, seemingly so fearless, a 
standard carried high. Graceful arches. Palace on the Heights. The Legion of Honor holds priceless collections of art. Rainbow fountains splash and sparkle. And out beyond lies the blue Pacific. The sea's clean salty spray dashes on the cliffs below, where golf courses literally hang out over the ocean. Flying over the surf, the plane quickly spans a swimming pool of warm salt water a thousand feet long, the largest in the world. Rippling water, restless with the tides, and wide sweeping beaches stretch for miles down the coastline, an expanse of enduring beauty. A renowned landmark, seal rocks, all the year round, these silky creatures roll, tumble and play in the sunlit pole. Dipping our wings inland, we fly over Golden Gate Park with its placid lakes, graceful swans, and drifting boats. Like a medieval castle in delicate rose, the De Young Museum in the park contrasts warmly with its cool green surroundings. It houses rare bits of beauty from the far corners of the globe. While its neighboring garden transports us to Japan in cherry blossom time where every year in surroundings typical of their country, the graceful maids of Nippon in their ancestral robes observe the birth of spring according to their native custom. They come to the park to spend many happy hours amid the dwarf trees, limpid pools, and curved bridges so reminiscent of their colorful homeland. Pointing our plane eastward across the blue expanse of bay, we come to the University of California, with its symbolic campanile. And in just a matter of minutes, our red bird spreads its wings over the artistic Spanish architecture of Stanford University. Full of wild, fantastic, and varied grandeur is Yosemite Valley, carved out of solid granite, as though torn apart by giant hands. Mile after mile of verdant woods and meadows, shadowed by awe-inspiring cliffs and peaks. Rippling streams come chanting in chorus through the valley. Startling vistas appear through the trees. And springing to life, waterfalls roar over majestic granite walls. Animals have no fear in this land of stern peaks and singing waters. Tranquil and beautiful is Mirror Lake, reflecting the glories nearby and the faraway snow-capped peaks. Eternal, invincible. Giant sequoias, the world's oldest and largest living things. Solemn, colossal trees, their venerable feet planted deep in Mother Earth, warmed by the ever-moving shafts of sunlight which pierce these cool green corridors. Like a veil of old Spanish lace, bridal bait falls downward, soft, misty, a miracle of color crystal spray in this land of glaciers, forests, and granite. A short flight brings us to the Monterey Peninsula with its unique and wind-blown cypress trees, the seeds of which were planted here by the early Spaniards. Del Monte, a favorite playground of motion picture stars and always a scene of lively activity, especially in the Roman plunge, artistically set in a sunken garden. With all of California to choose from, adventurous Spanish explorers selected Monterey for their first settlement. In this region of calm, blue water, sunshine and beauty, they found all they required for happiness and contentment. What a far cry this modern scene is from the days of dark-skinned noblemen, conquistadors, padres, and courtly dons. Once again in Cisco, we pause in our flight over a beautiful reminder of the Panama Pacific Exposition of 1915. The Palace of Fine Arts seems to be dreaming of days long past when the Tower of Jewels, with its myriads of scintillating lights, illumined all around. When there was music, laughter, dancing feet, light, color, and romance everywhere. We must leave you now to your dreams, dreams of those other days. And we circle Telegraph Hill, famed in poem and fiction, San Francisco. Of it and of its people, many stories have been told, and many more shall be, but a thousand tales.
tales tell not exhaust its treasury of romance.